everybody, Steph here. So I'm answering a question that was put to me just today by somebody on YouTube. And first of all, let me just say, ask questions. I don't mind you asking questions. Uh, if you disagree with a point of view that I may have, feel free to ask, feel free to challenge me. I have no problem with that. In fact, that's how you learn by people challenging your ideas. And in fact, in my, my career, as a developer in business and in martial arts, that's where I first learned to be honest with you. You have to continuously accept the possibility. You have to continuously accept the possibility that you could be wrong about things. I first learned this lesson in martial arts where, how did I learn it? It was in the eighth grade. I had done a little, I had done judo for a year or so. I'd done some Taekwondo and karate. And so I got into a bit of a street fight. And at the time I was doing Taekwondo and I love Taekwondo and I love to kick. And when I was fighting the guy, I was kicking him, but I wasn't penetrating him with my kicks. I was just touching him with my kicks in the fight. And thankfully, because I had done judo for a year or two, I forget what the time was. I just At this point, I only had an orange belt in judo, but still had done competition, lots of sparring in judo if you've ever done judo. And uh, so thankfully, I was able to uh, get out of the fight unscathed, not because of the taekwondo, and I'm not dissing taekwondo, but because of judo, because of sexual grappling, you're grabbing. And what I learned from that experience was that with Taekwondo, because I was kicking and touching in class, when I was under a high pressure situation with a street fight, even as a young kid in the eighth grade, I was doing the exact same thing I was doing in class. I was doing it in real world under pressure. See, a lot of martial artists would fool themselves to believe that if you know they would train a certain way but in a the street they would change it and do something else that's not true because when you are under pressure you resort back to your habit you resort back to what you do on a regular basis so in class if you were just touching people in your sparring that's what you're going to do in a fight and that's what happened to me so I was forced in that situation to realize that there were some flaws with the style of martial art that I was taking at the time. And so I switched to something else. And again, not a diss towards Taekwondo or anything. It was just not what I was looking for at that time. So the question was, I'm pro PHP, but what about Java? Isn't Java a more flexible language, a more powerful language? So the answer to that question, is Java more flexible? Yes, of course. Java is used all over the place. It's used for web app development. It is used for uh, mobile app development. And basically, native Android is all Java. It's uh, used all kinds of different places. At least, you could do it for desktop, and some people do some apps in Java, like I think uh, NetBeans is Java. Uh, amongst other apps. But in, generally speaking, Java is, is used for server-side coding. Uh, these days, the most popular Java framework for the server-side is uh, Spring, the Spring framework. Uh, a guy named Rod Johnson put this together. And he was basically, when he, he wrote a book, uh, I think it was called uh, Lighter, Smaller, Faster Java, something like that. I bought the book, actually. And in that book, he it was, it was basically his argument against a monolithic j 2 e Java frameworks out there. They were just massive. And he was basically saying it's, it's silly to have such heavyweight frameworks. So he, in that book, he sort of began what became the Spring framework, which was a, a much more nimble framework. Nimble in Java terms, relative to... Uh, relative to PHP or relative to uh, PHP Laravel or PHP uh, uh, Zen, PHP Symphony. These are all web frameworks in PHP and relative to other languages, like Python and so on. Uh, Java is still pretty heavy duty. But yes, Java is much more flexible because Java is also the native language for Android development as well. The thing about Java, though, it is a very verbose language. It's a language that takes a lot of... Um, code to get anything done. You can do, 
something with much less code in the PHP world, in I would imagine the Rails world, I imagine, I imagine the P Python Django world, uh, than you do with Java. Now, JavaScript on the server with Node and uh, Express, as far as I know, and I haven't done any myself, but I poked around it, and I have a friend who wrote uh, an asynchronous app using Node. He says that a lot of it's still immature, so a lot of stuff you have to do. Uh, it's not as uh, as mature as PHP backend or Rails or probably Django, although I haven't looked at Django myself. Anyway, again, I'm not dissing JavaScript. It's just every uh, environment, every framework, every language goes through a st you know these stages of development. JavaScript is, uh, it, of course, it's the master. It's the only game in town when it comes to client-side web development, and it is now becoming a more and more important aspect of server-side development with with uh, Node.js and Express. And big companies like Netflix it comes to mind use Node on their main app. That said, back to Java. Yeah, Java is much more flexible uh, in terms of PHP because all you do with PHP is you create web apps, but PHP was developed from the ground up, from the ground up for web apps, so it's kind of easy to get going. Like nobody will argue, even Ruby Rails guys who likes who will piss all over uh, PHP, uh, they will acknowledge anyone, any of them who have actually looked at PHP, they'll acknowledge that yes, you can get up and running in PHP. It's much easier to learn. It's much easier to pick up than Rails. Uh, that's for sure. And again, it's not an attack on Rails, it's just the nature of the game. PHP was designed specifically for dynamic websites, and its original name was Personal Homepage, right? And that was the that was the whole, that was that's what PHP stood for, Personal Homepage. So you know, and Java was designed to be a general purpose language, and then they put on top of it a layers layers to make it web enabled and it's servlets was the first thing. And then you had JSPs, which was kind of like Java's answer to ASP, which was active server pages. And JSP is basically the view layer and it's gotten much more sophisticated since then. Again, whether you choose PHP, Python, Java, C Sharp, it really depends on the type of work you want to do. And I've said that before. My vlog is really geared towards people who uh, more or less, I don't know, freelancers, I would say. And if you're getting into freelance work and you may not have a university degree, then the better choice by far is PHP. And I would say second to that would be JavaScript. And then third to that would be Python. Not because these languages are better than the other languages. It's just be, it, it, it's in terms of that context. If you want to go work for a larger company or you want to go work for a company that's doing Android development, then of course you're going to learn Java in that situation. So all these language choices that I make have to be taken into, uh, you have to take into account the context in which I'm talking about things. And I'm biased for Java. I really, I wrote more lines of Java code than any other language easily. Maybe partly because Java is such a verbose language, but you know, I've done more projects in Java than anything else. I really like the language. It's, it's very dependable. It's very consistent. The syntax is very clean. Uh, when you do something in Java, it works. When I found in other environments, wasn't necessarily the case. So that consistency, that dependability in terms of Java is something um, to be commended for sure. But I think though, you know, the mojo is moving away from Java unless you want to get into Android development, native Android development and enterprise server side development. I've never been a big fan of the enterprise, which is huge, huge app development. I'm much more inclined towards uh, small, medium sized type of apps. And in those cases, more nimble languages like PHP with a Laravel or uh, Python with a Django or JavaScript with Node and Express.js would be my inclination just because they're more nimble. But if Java is what you like, then go for it. Because if you get good at Java, you will find work and you will find high paying work for years and years to come because it's got such a huge base now. But understand the type of work you're probably going to end up doing with Java. 
So uh, that's it. I hope this uh, vlog was useful. And again, if you have questions, you don't agree with some of my opinions, voice them. I won't take. I don't take it personally. Show me where I'm wrong, and that means I, I I've learned something new. When you learn something new, it's good. I gain. So that's cool. All right, that's it for today. Bye bye.